Okay, big crowd. Hi, I'm Michalis. Um, I'm head in product at Workable. I've been in product management for like 15 years already, passed through big companies as well, like Nokia or, or Google. Um, I'm here today to discuss AI in, in product management. AI is not something that you know, we just discovered uh, like this year with the LLM revolution, but you know, it's been around for like, um, it's the second decade already. Uh, still, like with, with the new advancements in, in technology, we get a big boost, let's say, uh, from, from two different perspectives, let's say, when we're, we're talking about product management. One is the enhancements that we can do uh, to our products based on all those new uh, advancements in technologies. Uh, but secondly, it can also help product managers do the work, become more productive, have better results, more effective. Um, so I'm here to, to discuss both of them, and I, I'm trying not to stick to the theory, like what we could be doing, but um, actual examples of what we're actually doing, both in product uh, as well as uh, in, in product management. So I hope you find this useful and um, it's something that can probably help you uh, down the road as well for, 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 for your job. All right, so let's start with, with products. So I work uh, at Workable. Workable, um, if you don't know, it's a company which is offering, it's a SaaS company, it's offering services for recruiting for other companies. So if you wanna hire, let's say, a candidate, um, you can create an account, you, and you go to Workable, you like, type your job, um, it's getting posted all over the world, like in different job boards. You start getting candidates, CVs, it helps you evaluate until you reach the hire stage, uh, et cetera. So um, with like real examples, with things that we're already doing, I'm gonna show you basically um, how, let's say this product uh, in the last year or so has been enhanced with these new um, sort of technologies so that it's more, more competitive and better for our users. There are different things uh, that um, AI can offer for, um, for products. So there's like generative features, you can do forecasting or regressions, there are classifiers and recommenders, copilots, anomaly detection. There, these are things that um, you may be hearing uh, a lot. They're not just buzzwords. So I'll, I, I've put together a couple of examples for each one of those so that um, I can illustrate them. All right, let's start with generative features. Um, as I um, explained before, Workable is, um, helping you sort of post jobs and then get candidates, basically, okay? So posting a job is a great example that can be powered by AI in order to, to type up the job description, right? It's a generative AI um, vanilla feature, let's say. So uh, you type, I don't know, I want to hire a product manager here in Athens, and uh, AI can help you generate a job description, find the right skills. Um, you can, of course, like rephrase or, you know, generate or adjust, etc. It's not only based on uh, like ba um, basic training that um, your, your, your model will have, but it can also take under consideration things like your company profile um, and then sort of adjust the, the job description um, respectively. It can also take under consideration past data like other jobs that you may have generated in the past and things like that. So, um, of course, industry, like, you know, all of those factors um, are, um, are being leveraged by the AI model in order to, to generate, like, a, a good uh, job description. So that's, a, like, a, a very sort of straightforward example of a generative uh, a way, a generative feature that um, enhances this product. All right, let's say, so your job is now out there in, um, uh, in many job boards. Um, it's, it's good um, when posting jobs to provide some insights, both to your candidates, but also they're, they're useful for you as a recruiter, let's say, um, when you are looking for a person to understand, for example, what are, what's a competitive salary here in Athens for, for product managers, for example. Um, so this is, a, again, a very good sort of um, use case that um, uh, regression can, can help you with. So basically by leveraging uh, large amounts of, of data from, from, from different sources, um, data that um, we may have from, uh, from the market or from, um, from other hires that have been happening for product managers in Athens uh, based on the seniority level, et cetera. It can provide you like as, uh, insights as in a salary, uh, for example, range uh, in order for you to, to understand where you need to be 
uh, in, in the specific location. Um, all right, so your job is out there. A lot of candidates find it interesting, they, they start applying. We've seen jobs where sometimes there's like, I don't know, 200 or 300 candidates. That's a tough job for a recruiter to, um, to be able to evaluate and screen, basically, and uh, understand which ones are better fitting for the job. It's a, it's a lot of work, basically. And this is a great sort of use case, also, again, for technologies like uh, classifiers to help you sort of do a basic grouping uh, initially. Um, and uh, what, this, um, what this technology can offer, basically it can start by matching the, the skills that uh, the job is, is requiring, um, or the background, for example, I don't know, the educational background, uh, with what the candidate has. But it can also go, um, it can go further and um, sort of understand, like, for example, um, the profiles from candidates that you have hired in the past. And maybe, you know, if this candidate could be like a good fit, maybe from a cultural um, uh, standpoint. Um, different things that can be done in order for you to, help, uh, for you to, to have at least a first group, let's say, of uh, candidates that, you know, look, look more promising. So this is a, a use case of classifiers and eventually recommender um, that provides a specific set of, of, of candidates that uh, would be good to, to advance. Um, Copilots. Maybe you've heard copilots. It's a very sort of common now term for, for products. Basically, you have AI helping you out throughout the journey of, of the tasks you need to do. Also a very good use case for um, for a product like, um, like a recruiting product like Workable. Um, so me again as a recruiter, um, I'm, I, I have candidates, I have reached out to them. Maybe some of them have passed some tests, some assessments that I have put in place. Um, having a co-pilot, basically, you know, a, um, a place like in the product, a prominent place in the product, which tells me what's the next best action, for example, based on, uh, on, on data that it can uh, understand and, and take a decision of what's the best next action is, a, is very useful. For example, um, a co-pilot can understand uh, all the comments that uh, the members of the hiring team have done under the profile of a specific uh, candidate and um, understand sort of what's the feeling of the hiring team. Like, you know, this is a good candidate. Maybe, you know, uh, we see that everyone sort of agrees that it's a, it's a good fit. Maybe we should proceed to the next stage, like an interview. Or, you know, um, analyze the assessment results and again sort of um, provide some uh, recommended action like, you know, maybe this candidate is a good one for, um, to, to proceed to the next stage, make an offer, I don't know, have an executive interview and stuff like that. Um, not all of the features that um, uh, you can enhance a product with are, um, let's say, end user, um, are not exposed to the end user. So there are things, there are services uh, that can be also AI powered, which under the hood also make your product better. Uh, one of those cases is the anomaly detection. Anomaly detection is basically uh, the analysis, uh, like the, 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 the tool is doing an analysis of uh, things that don't look right. They're outside of a trend, there are spikes, different things um, that do not look normal. In our use case, it helps us a lot with fraud detection. Uh, fraud, for, for our case, could be um, someone posting a job which looks really, really good in order to, to get personal uh, data from, from candidates. Um, and this we get a lot, right? So anyway, there's fraud like all over the place. You know this better than me. But um, for our use case, we want to make sure that the, the jobs that we're posting to the different job boards and that people see are actually real jobs and, um, and with good quality. Um, and there are things that we can do, and AI is helping us with that um, when it comes to fraud detection. So uh, we can analyze, for example, the account activity or uh, the information that they have, like what website they provided. Uh, what's the, if they have like social media presence, um, the user, what activity they did, have they invited other team members, um, have they sent any, uh, any emails, how often do they do that? Because we see, you know, patterns from uh, customers who are like, um, uh, like real customers, and we see, you know, what usually um, a customer who's, uh, who's real is going to um, generate and post a, a, a quality job 
what they do, right? What's their behavior? And if we see someone really outside of those uh, lines, we, we, we sort of flag it in order to have a closer look to see if everything is, uh, if everything is okay or if something's wrong. So there, these were just a few examples of um, how AI can sort of help a, a product. There are many more, right? And um, there are many more coming up which we don't even know yet. But um, I, like, in this um, short period of time, try to show you a little bit what we have done, we have accomplished the last sort of nine months, and maybe it could be a source of inspiration for, for your products. Uh, but let's also have a look at how AI is helping uh, product managers as well. So when I'm saying product managers, um, I'm sure like most uh, all of you uh, probably know what a product, management is do, a product manager is doing. We're basically the, the person who is responsible for defining uh, what the company will be building next and uh, why and when, okay? Uh, so probably everyone is familiar with this. We are involved for in, in, in all of the phases of the product development life cycle from the start, which is the idea discovery and validation where we gather all the customer feedback, you know, we see the market, uh, we look at the competition, and um, we, we, we do some research in order to come up with what we need to build and, and what it needs to, to look like. Um, once we sort of gather all of those um, requirements and we do our analysis, we come up with some concepts of the solution, so we need to validate that. So that's the second phase. Then it's the implementation phase where, uh, as a product manager, like you write user stories, um, the, um, the development team is, um, is doing the, the, the development work as a product manager. You need to, um, to accept it, to validate it. And then we're going to the launch once everything is ready. We want to make it uh, available to our customers. And after launching, you want to monitor and improve, right? So this is typical product management, let's say, everyday tasks. And um, we have seen that um, there's a lot of things that, you know, we can become much more productive by using uh, a few of the tools that are available out there. There's actually a ton of tools. This is just a snapshot of them. There's more. But to be honest, in like, I don't know, 80% of the cases, you can even sort of um, improve the way that you have been used to work uh, with just by using GPT. There are more specialized tools, of course, can help you like in specific use case, they can help you become much, much better, but um, GPT will take you a long way as well in case you, you're not using it already. Uh, so in terms of like the, the idea discovery, so here we're talking, for example, for customer feedback, right? Um, a great use case, if you see it to the right, like an example of, um, um, uh, this has, um, uh, the result of an analysis that GPT did for me for uh, the results from our product satisfaction and NPS surveys. So product satisfaction and NPS surveys, you know, the customer replies like, you know, how satisfied you are with the product, and then they can also give you like a, an answer of, uh, of like a comment what they would like to improve. So we're taking these things, um, all of those comments, and uh, we pass them through, through the tools, and these, uh, the tools can sort of help us categorize in which areas we need to improve, right? So, I don't know, uh, UX, like how, how do we have usability issues? Do we have navigation challenges, right? Do customers need more flexibility and customization? So all of those things are important for a product manager to know in order to be able to, productize, to, uh, to prioritize. There are more things that we can do, like sentiment analysis. Um, GPT can help us with competitive analysis, and we can uh, analyze analytics, stuff like that. There's a lot of things that we can do in this phase with, with AI. When it comes to, um, to, to forming up the, formulating the, the requirements and try to come up with a solution, um, of course, it can help us write PRDs. That's an easy use case uh, so that you, know, you get a, a lot of the, um, the work out of the door um, with the use of, of uh, some generative AI. Um, but uh, it can also help us um, create user stories. It can also help us create even low fidelity mocks if we want, like uh, if your design team wants something uh, quick and dirty, it can even help us, uh, you know, um, the, the different tools that are out there to generate images can also help us in, in this direction so that we can do some very fast prototyping. More things that we can do once uh, we're getting close to sort of uh, finishing the work and launching. Um, first of all, copy. It can help with copy. Of course, there are copywriters out there, but they can also leverage this type of tools um, to help them sort of create a lot of the in-product copy. Um, it can help with communications that uh, you want to build 
in order to market your product to your customers. Um, it can even help you with internationalization, right? So if you if you have uh, if you have if your product is heavy on content, um, those tools can help are doing a really good job actually in terms of uh, internationalizing or you know translating in different languages, etc. Um, so now we launched. We need to monitor um, what's happening. I, I found a very useful um, use case of um, the regression and the clustering uh, capabilities uh, when we, I was trying to sort of crack a problem where we, you know, we launched a new feature, but we didn't see sort of customers basically using it a lot. So by passing uh, the data of like, all the activities that the different customers sort of did, uh, with different signals that I, um, that I selected, uh, I was able to get the result of like three clusters, as you see here. I have mocked the rest of the data. It was real data. It was a bit sensitive. But basically, um, I was able to get clusters of, of uh, customer profiles, let's say, uh, which ones are actually using it, and, and then I could understand why, and which ones were not. For example, I could see that you know, whoever has um, full, um, like between 20 and 50 full-time employees was much more likely to use it than someone who had 50 to 100 full-time employees, or someone who was doing um, uh, active hiring or was in an annual plan, I don't know, was more or less likely to use it than someone who was not, right? So this type of things is not, it would not be easy without this technology to sort of understand from, from, from the data, especially when the data is, um, is in big numbers. Uh, so these were some examples of how, you know, um, the, the AI has been helping us also from a product management perspective. Now, if I would dare to sort of look a little bit of what's coming next, there's a big question mark, we don't know, because you've seen that things are coming, like new things are, are coming out every day, so it's like, um, it's a great time to be alive in for, for AI because there's uh, so many things are basically happening right now, so it's very exciting. Um, we see the, the usage of autonomous agents, which um, I'll discuss right now, uh, which could be sort of more streamlined. Um, autonomous agent is basically a, a service that is doing all the work that you know, would uh, otherwise need to be manual um, and is able to take decisions by itself, uh, leverage a, a large number of different tools that it can have in order to reach a goal. For example, let's say, again, let's go for a recruiter sort of use case. It could be, you know, instead of you know, having a recruiter who is actually deciding, oh, do I have a, uh, many candidates or not? What do I need to do? I need to publish the job more. You have a, an AI agent which is basically doing that. It can even take decisions like, um, I need um, more candidates which are, I don't know, in, um, in more early stages of their, um, of their professional career. Maybe I need to post in social media where, you know, I would find these type of candidates. So these type of things, uh, it could be things that, you know, a autonomous agents eventually could be trained to do. Um, it's, um, it's interesting to see how this is going to evolve. I also showed you some optimizations we have done sort of in different places in the product. I'm sure that we are going to go now in like system-wide optimizations um, where you know, many sort of different uh, data streams from all over the product are leveraged to, to create uh, different results and maybe many different services from different places can also be combined. Overall, we don't know what will come. Uh, that's, I think, the, <laughs> the biggest takeaway uh, here. Um, there's a lot of talk about general AI, autonomous agents, as I said. We need to see, right? Um, that's it. Hope you found it useful. <laughs>